Welcome to ACCA paper P7, Advanced Audit and Assurance. Let's start by considering how P7 is different from the lower level audit paper F8. For a start, let's think about the F8 paper, which I'm hoping that you have passed. The basics of how to carry out an external audit is exactly the same in P7 as compared to what you saw in F8. So, generally speaking, there is no new audit theory that you have to learn in P7. For example, in F8, you have studied ethics. Things like whether your firm should take up an audit engagement, or is there an ethical issue about it? Something like that. These things are in P7 as well. You have studied audit planning. You have considered materiality, analytical procedures, audit risks, what areas of the financial statement are more likely to have material misstatement, things like this. And yes, all of these things are on this exam too. You looked at internal control system, that's here too, but not as much as F8. And you looked at substantive testing, that is testing individual numbers and disclosures directly by looking for supporting evidence. And that is very much on this syllabus. Audit completion, assessing going concern, all these things are on this syllabus too. So at this point, you might be thinking, if all of these F8 stuff are on P7 as well, so what is different? The answer is, even though the methodology and the theory are the same, the set of financial statements that you are going to audit are far more complicated compared to F8. So the main difference between P7 and F8 is that, even though you are using the same methodology for the audit, the accounting standards that are involved are more advanced. The first big tip for P7 is that don't focus as much on the word audit, rather make sure that your accounting standard knowledge is up to your level best. You have to know your accounting standards very well. That obviously raises the question, which accounting standards I need to know? Well, if you look at the position of P7 in the sequence of exams, you will see that it comes in at the very last. So, this is the final hurdle and this is the toughest exam of all. Well, not really. It actually means that it comes not only after F7 but after P2 as well. Which means any accounting standard that you have studied in F7 or P2 could come up in the P7 exam. If you don't know the accounting standards, how would you know if there is anything wrong with the financial statements? I have to say, and I cannot stress this enough, that your accounting standard knowledge is absolutely vital for this exam. This is one of the main reasons why almost 70% of the people who take the P7 paper fail it. Not a lack of auditing skills, but rather lack of accounting knowledge. Having considered that, even though things like financial instruments, pensions, or foreign exchange could come up in the P7 exam, historically, the P7 examiner tended to focus on things like intangible asset, contingency, events after reporting period, which are not as complicated as some other ones, but do be warned that anything could come up. 